Welcome back to Pillars of Eternity. Let's go do things. Um, in the last episode, we wandered around Gilded Vale some more. Uh, we did stuff. I don't know, my memory's bad. And I don't know how to explain what all we did, because a lot of it was just kind of wander. But... Yeah, okay. That one empty already, that one's empty already. Okay, okay, okay. So where to next? Well, we could go up to the windmill. We haven't been up to the windmill. Sure. It's labeled on the map. It's got to be important. I went the wrong way to get to the windmill. We know there's more grain in there, Trumbull. We won't settle for scraps while you go f grow fat on our crops. A muffled shouting emerges from inside the mill. The first of you drunkards comes through that door, gets a shot between the eyes. Gods hear me, Swainer, I'll put you down like a dog. Come away for now, lads, but we'll be back, Trumbull. And we'll have fair prices, or by the flame, we'll have a reckoning. Alright. Well, that was interesting, I think. Anything cool over here? No. Ooh, but there's mushrooms over here. Come get them. Grab them with your little hands. Now go in there. Hey, please don't shoot. I'm not the guy you wanted to shoot. <laughs> An elven man stands before you, his relatively stocky build suggesting a life of labor. His face is pale and drawn and his eyes wide. Behind him, a younger man and woman exchange worried glances. The miller raises a club as you enter. It shakes violently in his grip. Get, get back, if you value your life. <clears throat> Put that down before you get yourself hurt. Trumbull only raises the club higher. I mean it, I won't have Swainer and his lackeys threatening me in my own mill. Uh, I only just got here. Trumbull shakes his head. You picked a bad time to come visiting. Gilded Vales had it, all its shine scraped off. Just a big dung heap now, and Swainer thinks he's king of it. They're all of the mad. What was all that ruckus outside? Trumbull shakes his head. Oh, where to begin? Swainers whipped them up into a froth, going on about grain stores. Claims I've hidden away most of it. All I do with the grain is sell it. I can't create it out of thin air, and I can't hand it out for free. I pay the farmers for the crops they bring in, and I sell what comes out of the mill. Most of it goes to the Black Hound, on the west side of town, for ale. And Swainer and his lot sure don't mind that part. You take a look at the fields on the way into town. The crops blighted, and most of what I'm getting from the farmers, Trumbull gestures to the sacks and containers, it's gone off, rotted through. I can't pay prices for blighted wheat, and I've barely got enough good grain to go around. Swainer's howling after things he has no right to. If you don't want those people in here with torches, maybe you ought to stop lying to me. Trumbull blinks, taken aback. I'm not... Uh, look, it's no lie. The stores really are low, and with so little grain going around, I had to raise the prices for some people. There are folks in these towns that deserve far better than Swainer and his lot. People who have done more for Gilded Vale. People like the Magistrate? I can't do anything about that, Trumbull says, his voice quiet. That's just how it works. Maybe things are different elsewhere. Here, Radrick's men, they keep, they keep the village safe, so they eat well. Swainer's people are farmers. They gathered that grain for you. They sure don't mi didn't mind losing that grain when it, was all, when it was going into the drinks at the inn. They don't make like kind neighbors when they insult my son, go stumbling drunk through my own crops. You'd think they're the only ones that need to eat? 
Now the crops are sick, and the wind's too weak to get the windmill turning. Our village's children are born as empty shells. That's not my doing. This place is cursed, and Swainer and the others haven't done a thing to help the rest of us through the lean season. What do you mean? Swainer, the rest. They've always been troublemakers. Loud, drunken fools. That woman with him. Her soul traces back to Dry he Dryden, that wretched brigand, and it shows. We have good people in this town. People still hanging on to what's left of it. They deserve a little more, that's all I'm saying. Is your self-righteousness worth losing your family over? Trumbull opens his mouth to protest, but his expression shifts to resignation well before he finally nods and speaks. You're right, he says quietly. I've been trying to plan for the future, but we're in danger here and now. Fine. Tell Swainer and the others that I've reconsidered. Provided he pays the same as everyone else, he's welcome to his fair share. Trumbull sighs. And let's hope we can trade for supplies real soon, or we'll all be in a bad way. Nice. Oh, that's stealing. But I want to look anyway. It's, it's grain. You'll regret this, and so will Swainer when the town's starving around him. A rancid stench rises from this grain. It's mushy and mottled with green. You got what you wanted. Leave us alone. Alright, bye. I feel a little bit bad, but on the other hand, uh, if the farmers can't eat, then they can't bring you the grains. And if they can't bring you the grains, then you, everybody dies that way, too. At least this way, death doesn't seem as guaranteed. Alright, what's this house over here? Have I looked at it yet? <clears throat> I don't think so! Is this grain rotted too? Hi? Despite the rains, the stocks feel- yeah, dang it. Cows! <clears throat> Hi, buddies! Black Hammer Smithery. Let's check out the smithery. No, that's steel. Put up there, that's take. Give me that book. The bellows sigh into the furnace, and the coals burn brighter still. This Amawa man is of an impressive build, towering above the countertop. His skin is the dusky blue of the deeper oceans, and his thick arms boast corded muscle. Small ears frame a square-jawed face coated in smeared soot and arcing black tattoos alike. He offers you a broad smile as you approach. Welcome! You're the first new face I've seen in quite some time. What can I do for you? Is this your shop? <clears throat> that it is. Been here near on 20 years now. Seen all manner of things over the years. Good luck and bad. Tuatanu glances at the guard standing watch along the wall. But the black hammer smithery remains. You come to us at a strange time, I'm afraid. The stock's not what it used to be, but we have fine weapons and armor to offer yet, all forged right here at the Black Hammer. What happened? We just don't have the supplies. Been expecting the next de delivery for near on a week now and have seen, haven't seen seen a sign of it. 
Have to expect they were hit by bandits. The road out east is crawling with them. Or my workers ran off with the wagon themselves, maybe, to make some coin. Tuatani snorts. As if that lot would dare. He's right about the bandits. The dire situation in villages like this and the exodus to the cities has created far too many opportunities for unscrupulous sorts. Tuatani scratches his jaw, thinking. If you happen to be headed that way, maybe you could keep an eye out for a supply wagon? Or my shipment, at least. They'd be cutting through black the Black Meadow, I expect. Only good road for it. As it is, most of our weapons go to His Grace, Lord Radrick. Tuatani glances at the nearby guard. And that's as it should be. But it doesn't leave much for outsiders. We just don't have the iron. I will find... Where was the wagon traveling from? We send the wagon up to New Hamar with weapons, and it swings around through Logholm and the like to purchase supplies. Shortest route back is through the Black Meadow, and then north through the wilds. Tuatani shakes his head. Had a trader come through with word they'd made it to Longholm, to Logholm, but haven't heard a thing since. I'll find your supplies. Tuatani nods. Then you have my thanks. You bring those supplies back, and I'll have plenty more to offer you. A discount to start. Oh, and if you find my workers... Tell them to hurry it up, or they can t take up farming instead. All right. Good day, stranger. What about your wares? Well, we got. We don't need two Zarip spears. We probably don't need two clubs, honestly. We probably don't need simple clothing. I should look at what you actually have. Ooh, a pike. Ooh, arbalest. What's the difference between an arbalest and a crossbow? Like, I know there is one. I can kind of visualize the difference, but I don't actually know for sure what the difference is in a meaningful way. You know? Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense. Trade. Okay, bye. Let's see, where else can we go in town? The temple is really the only other place left. Okay, I think in the next episode we will head over to the temple. And for now, bye-bye. Actually, maybe we'll finally do the thing we're supposed to do, talk to that lady in the tree. Yeah, whatever, we'll figure it out. Bye-bye!